Hey, what's up, guys? Your boy OG Black. Smash, like, subscribe. Hit that little OG button on the bottom. Get you guys self all the notifications. Get you guys subscribed to the channel. Uh, my PayPal, my Patreon is there on the descriptions below. Um, anybody that wants to join the show can join it, man. This is your guys' show. I'm going to bring you guys something serious today, man. Um, I've never talked. You know, today being Monday, Mafiosos, I thought we'd talk about, to me, who is right now in the media or in the world or him and his sons and the organization they're in, they're, they're considered the top flight mafiosos. And today is Monday, so I decided to talk about him, talk about something that nobody else has talked about. And it's not a subject that I'm glorifying. It's not a subject that I condone. Um, these are facts. They're written uh, facts from court. It's not something that OG Black is making up. Um, it's not something that, that you should take with a grain of salt, like other guys say on YouTube. Um, you know, you're about to get hit with a dick of reality right now, like some other YouTuber said. Um, you know, let's go, let's get it, you know? So here you guys go. Now, Chapel's whole thing that's been going on with him, with his core, with everything, if you guys notice, not only has he been snitched out by his compadres, by a lot of people, but he has a lot of bad relationships. He has a lot of women who are scornful against him, and the list goes on. But I got a couple names here of when Chapel was incarcerated, who he was with, what the name of these women are that are documented by the U.S. courts, not the Mexican courts, the U.S. courts. And I'm going to tell you guys why. OG Black don't really believe in the Mexican courts. I don't believe in the European courts. And I damn as hell don't believe in the Canadian courts. Now I'm going to tell you why. The United States government, no matter what, they falsify the documents. They always do that. They falsify court documents. They falsify everything. But at the end, there's original documents. And those original documents usually tell the truth. And there's always one fucking document they forgot to erase. So here you guys go. You know, Chapo's been, some people can call him, um, you know, an innovator in, the, in a dope game. Some people can call him this. Some people can call him a monster. I'm not here to judge the man, and am I not here to offend the Guzman Loera family at all? I'm not here to make any enemies. This is just something that OG Black does. It gives you guys a real 100%. And here's a little history on, on a couple of women that Chapo was with him, uh, when he was in Puente Grande. Now, one of the girls that he was with was a 23-year-old named by the name of Sulema Yule Hernandez. Now, they said that he really had a good eye for her. Um, you know, Chapo at the time was married, but they said he was just had a little sexual appetite that was a little um, off the chain. Now, guys, being in jail and being in, a, in, in prison or whatever, it's true. I mean, um, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, you get bored, you get sexually, you know, frustrated, but you got to deal with it, man. You got to learn how to channel it. Now, this girl named Sulema, Yuli Hernandez, was one of the first girls that Chapo had ended up, um, like some would say, wooing. Some people would say um, manipulating. Whatever it was, is um, she ended up being pregnant. Um, since she wasn't married and um, she didn't have conjugal visits, um, pretty much the baby was Chapo's. Um, court records show that um, she had an abortion. Um, later on after that, about six months after having that, she committed suicide, guys. Um, you know, a lot of people say what happened to her, you know. Um, they said the Mexican government documents say that on December the 17th, they found her in the trunk of a car in the city of Mexico. Now, um... There was uh, the letter Z written on her buttocks, the letter Z written on her chest. A lot of people say that was a trademark of the setas. Now, the Mexican government's um, paperwork at the bottom of that desk says that um, some of the wounds look like they were pre-mortem. And if anybody knows what pre-mortem means, that means it sh after she had died. Now, they could have mutilated her. They could have, uh, you know killed her and then mutilated her body afterwards which is which is a theory um, another theory is that she committed suicide and um, 
you know, she didn't uh, get killed, that she committed suicide, and, and, and um, they tried to make it look like they murdered her, so, you know, but at the end, she committed suicide, so you never hear the end of that story, man, and her name was Zulema Yule Hernandez, that's just one of the girls he was with, here's the second one, her name is Diana Patricia, now, uh, he met her kind of in the same way, she was in there, I believe, she was sent, in, uh, it says right here, in 1999 to Puente Grande. She was there to serve a 15-year sentence on drug trafficking and gun and money laundering. Um, she was also married to another uh, mafioso, but probably so low in the chain, you know what I mean? So, um, same way, uh, he wooed her with chocolates, roses, and sending money to her children, which she had too. I guess Chopper didn't respect the old finger, huh? Um, you know, one of the ones that is uh, really interesting to me right now, and I saved her to the end because, um, you know, not too much is known about her, and she's the one of greatest interest out of all of them. Her name is Ives Eredina Moreno. And she was actually older, guys. And this is why I think that the DEA has such a hard on for her. She was a 38-year-old um, cook in the prison. In Puente Grande, that's how she met Chapo, by making uh, special meals for him that he ordered while he was there. Um, second thing was that I found out about her that um, she did have a child, and her child was sick. Um, evidently, I think her child had kidney disease, and he, and he uh, needed a, a kidney transplant, which um, at the end happened. The court documents say right here that at the end uh, it did happen. And here's another one, guys, if you guys want to know something about her. No one's ever heard anything about Miss Morena since 2002. Now, what the DEA says in, in, uh, in their paperwork or in these little sub uh, note titles that I'm reading off the research that I did, is they're saying that they believe she had a child with him that they don't know of. And uh, he likes to keep it that way. You know, guys, um, and it says that they were very... Um, interested in her because she was 38 years old when he met her which was she was about the oldest one out of the four relationships that he had there in prison that they know of um and uh she has not been seen since 2002 uh she was seen in um switzerland and in rome once and they have video of her in rome so um i don't think a cook from the prison is going to rome guys if you know what i mean and uh, her appearance had changed dramatically, which is probably true. Probably got plastic surgery, guys. You guys got to understand something. In Sinaloa and Tijuana and Tamaulipas and Juarez and all that, you got some of the best surgeons for real cheap. And uh, they do some really good jobs over there now. They're not, you know, they've messed up enough where they learned. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, she's one of the interests of it. You know, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down for you guys to be real. You know, OG Black's been in the business since he was about 13 years old. <clears throat> Women can do two things to you in this business. They can save you, or they can ruin you. And I'm going to tell you why. In Chapo's case, he's made them so mad and scornful against them that they've uh, pretty much walked into the police station, as they would say here in California, and told on themselves. They hate them so much that the wrath of their own judgment and the wrath of their own punishment is nothing to them. You know, I'm going to give you guys a good quote. The Bible says, there is no wrath like the wrath of a woman.